In today's video, we are going to be looking at completing the square. Complete the square is used when you can't factorize in the traditional, conventional way um, that we normally do, where you can't find those numbers that multiply to give you this number and add to give that number. So Completing the square can also be used to find things like the turning points. But in this lesson, we are just going to focus on how to do the actual method itself. Okay? You will know when you need to complete the square when you're told in an exam question, factorize the expression, the quadratic, leaving your answer in the form x plus p squared plus q, okay, or something similar to that, okay, essentially in this strange format. Now, there are three simple steps that I recommend that you use. Step number one, make sure that the coefficient of x squared is one. If it's other than one, deal with it. How? Divide, factorize that number out. And I'll show you that later on. Step number two, divide the coefficient of x, okay, the, remember the coefficient of x, the b value, okay, by two. And step number three, take away the squared of whatever you value you obtained by dividing the b by two. But we'll show you this through example. The best way of learning is to do examples. So let's begin. So step number one, the coefficient of x squared is already one, so I don't need to worry about that. So what I do, how I start is with an empty bracket with an x and a squared here. Now, step number two, the coefficient of b. The coefficient of b here is six plus six, positive six. I divide that by two, so I get six divided by two, which is three. Step number three, take away the squared of that value, so three squared, okay? Now that five is already there, so I just append that to the end of that, that continues. And that's essentially it. All that's required now is to tidy up, all right? This is completing the square, it's as simple as that, all right? So what do you do? You do x plus three here, just rewrite that, there's nothing to tidy up. Now, three squared is nine, so it's minus nine, take away Five. So nine, minus 9 minus 5 is minus 14. So that's it. That's our answer. Okay. So x plus 3 squared minus 14. As you can see our p value here is plus 3 and our q value is minus 14. So we have factorized x squared plus 6x minus 5 and here is our final answer. Let's go on to the next example. Okay, on to our next example. We want to factorize x squared plus 14x and leave our answer in that form. So once again, step number one, we want to make sure that the coefficient of x squared is one. The coefficient of x squared, is it one? Yes, it is. It's one. Okay, so that's good. So we'll write our brackets. So x squared, and that's it. Okay, this is like your sort of um, your cloak for completing the square, all right? Step number two, take the coefficient of b, which is 14 plus 14, and divide it by two. So half of 14 is seven. Step number three, take away that value squared, right? It's take away that value squared, okay? Not, or often what students do is they do this. They end up squaring minus seven, getting an overall positive 49, which is wrong you take away the value squared, okay? Now, unlike the previous example, there's nothing else here, so I won't add anything here, okay? So, let's do this. Um, we just need to tidy up, so we have minus 49. And this has now been factorized using completing the square. Now, what I didn't do in the last example I forgot to show you is whether this is correct or not. And we can check this, how? by actually expanding these brackets out. So we have x plus seven squared, so I'm gonna do two of those brackets, and then we have the minus 49 on the outside. I'm just doing this step here, you don't need to do this, just show you um, that our answer is actually correct. So what do we do here? We do x times by x, which is x squared, x times by positive seven is plus seven x, positive seven, times by x is plus 7x again, and then 7 times 7 
is plus 49. And then we've got the minus 49 here, so we can add that here as well. So let's collect all the like terms. So x squared, we've got 7x and 7x, which is 14x. And the plus 49 and minus 49, they cancel out. And we're just left with x squared plus 14x, which is the question that we had originally. So as you can see, when we, exp uh, when we expand this out, we get the same answer. Why don't you try this one? Pause the video, do your own working out, um, and then press play again, and then compare with my answer. Okay, so once again, step number one, let's ensure that the coefficient of x squared is one. Yes, it is. So that's good to go. Here's my bracket. Step number two, divide the coefficient of b by two. So two divided by uh, two is one. So we get minus one. Remember the minus was minus two. So it's going to be minus one in here. And then take away that value squared. So one squared. And then we've got the plus four this time again. So plus four outside. Next, tidy up. So x minus one squared. That is minus 1. 1 squared is minus 1. So plus 4. And then we've got x minus 1 squared. And minus 1 plus 4 is plus 3. So that is factorize of that one. Right, so on to our fourth example. Uh, this time, I've got a little surprise for you, just to add a little bit of spice to this. So we've got x squared plus 5x plus 12. Off you go. Pause the video. Try it yourself. And then press play again. Right, okay, I'm sure you probably came across some difficulty in this one. All right, let's see what happened. So, step number one, the coefficient of x squared is one. We're good to go. So, I will do um, where we have coefficient more than one, and we have to deal with that later on, okay? So, um, did, um, half that coefficient of five, and that is probably where you had a bit of difficulty. Uh, with this value here, okay, because where you probably was thinking to yourself whether you should um, keep it as 5 over 2 or use 2.5, um, whatever you did, I'm sure you, you, you are correct, and just follow and see whether your final answer matches mine or not, okay, so I've taken away the 5 over 2 squared, and the plus 12 is hanging around there anyway, so I'll leave that like that, okay, now remember, um, I did say to you at the beginning of the lesson that completing the square usually appears on a non-calculated paper. So if you did do something like 2.5 and 2.5 here, and you might, you know, and other decimal numbers, then you can't rely on your calculator to give you the squares of those numbers. Okay, you have to deal with fractions. All right, so let's continue. So we have x plus 5 over 2 squared. And now what happens here? We've got minus. So we've got minus 5 squared here. So that's 25 over 2 squared, which is 4. And then we've got the plus 12. Now, we are going to be dealing with fractions. We're going to add those fractions together. So it's probably a good time now just to change that 12 into a fraction. All right, with a denominator of four, because we can only add and collect uh, fractions where we have the same denominators. So what would the top have to be so that something divided by four still gives us 12? Yes, that's right, it's going to be 48. 48 divided by four is still 12. That is 12, okay? But we're gonna leave it like that just to help us collect those like terms. So we just need to do minus 25 plus 48, which gives us minus 23 over four. And that is our final answer. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please share with your friends and family if you found this beneficial. And please help the channel to grow. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.